back over so you can see the palette knife that I'm going to be using. It's a small palette knife. And if anyone here um, knows a lot about palette knives and you use oils or acrylics, you'll know more about these than I do. And I know they come in different sizes, so I can't tell you exactly what size this one is. Um, it is a smaller one, as I said. So let me get back over to YouTube and Facebook. Vera says she's echoing. Thanks, Vera. <laughs> You ever have those days when, you know, you get up and it's like, I think maybe I should go back to bed. It's kind of what today has been, one of those crazy, crazy days. So if you guys use a lot of palette knives, and you can tell me what size palette knife this is, other than just a small palette knife, then, um, you know, kind of let me know. But again, as we're working on a tree, and we're looking up, from below up into that tree. The tree still, the perspective, and it's going to get narrower at the top. So we kind of want to have that effect. And we're going to go in and, and if you're unsure about doing this, you can you know, draw your, your lines in if you want, or you can just go in with your palette knife and go into and draw your tree that way. And what I want to do is I want to get the tree that I used or I did. And this is on Legion's paper, the Stonehenge Aqua watercolor, 140 pound cold press paper. And I really, really like this paper. They also have it in 300 pound, and that's really, really, uh, that's a wonderful paper, but it is a little more on the expensive side. But I do almost all of my brush o paintings on the 140. Again, it's the Stonehenge Aqua, it's the Stone Legion Paper Stonehenge Aqua watercolor paper, and this is the cold press. So there's a little bit of tooth to this paper. So it doesn't matter what direction you're going to start your tree, whether you're going to start it over and just go straight up, you're going to go at an angle. If you want to pre-sketch it, go ahead. You know, you can kind of sketch out what you want, knowing you want it to get just a little narrower up at the top, not a lot. But, you know, you, so you can however you want to do it. You can do it, a, I did this one a little fatter. Let's go back and look at this tree again. really doesn't matter and again I'm going back to my tree and I was saying if you're going to do it and as you're drawing it out you get the top part a little wider flip it over make that the more the base of your tree and the top up at you know the top of your paper it's really, you know, there's no right or wrong way to doing this. It's just all about having fun. I lean over on YouTube said it looks like a one. Can you explain what you're talking about? It looks like a one and I'm going to 
put um, back up on the Academy. So, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of sketch this out. We're using, as I said, the Stonehenge Aqua watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press, has a little bit of tooth. I'm going to put that off to the side. And the colors that I'm going to be using, yellow ochre, violet, and OST Oast Blue. Uh, Susan said lost sound now screen frozen on the tree photo okay well I'm not I won't show that tree again hopefully we're back and everybody is um, we're all on going strong again hopefully let me know who's on Vera if you're still on Oh, there is a number one on her palette knife. Eileen over on YouTube said she has a palette knife. She has a number one on her palette knife, and it appears to be about the same size. So let's go ahead and say this is a number one. We'll say that's the size of this palette knife is a number one. Thanks. Eileen, I really appreciate that. Okay, so what you're saying over on Facebook that it freezes when I show the tree photo. Okay, so we're not, we won't show the tree photo any longer. Um, I don't think it was freezing. Might just be over on Facebook that that was happening because it doesn't look like it was freezing over on YouTube. So again, the colors that we're going to be using, yellow ochre, violet, and OST, Oast Blue. And a lot of you have watched me before when I do this. And I just turned I use my board a lot and I do my, I'll sprinkle here and then add water. And I have a pot of water I was painting today. So I'm using dirty water, which, you know, I do that a lot. It doesn't really, for me, it doesn't matter until it really, really gets dirty. And then I'll change it out. So we're going to sprinkle just a little of the yellow ochre. my violet and my oast blue I'm using just a regular spray bottle I picked these up at the dollar store just cheap inexpensive and I'm just spraying a little bit of water on my board just to mix up a little bit of the color so I have my lines here but I never stick to my lines so we're just going to wing it and I'm going to make it just a little smaller I think and just kind of go up and I think I'll start off mixing my violet on my board and for me it's just a little easier if I move this and I'm just taking that edge and running it up and it's okay if I don't do an exact straight line. That's great. Because we're going to use those edges. Make sure you can see this. 
So we have one side. And on a birch tree, they have the texture in the, the trunk that comes out. I'm just adding just a few of those just to get it started. And I went up a little bit at an angle, which is perfect. Going to add just some of the, the purples in. And I'm just trying to get up. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so let's put the other side in and let's do the same thing. And as you can see, when I sketched, my line was over here. I'm not going to make it quite that thick and just running it up. Again, the top is going to be a little bit narrower. Okay, so this is the part that really gets to be kind of important when um, you're doing a painting and you need to decide what direction is your light source coming from. So I believe, based off of just this sketch that I've done here with drawing this in with my palette knife, I'm thinking my sun, my light is coming from this direction. So this side of the tree is going to be lighter than this side. And then of course the center of our tree is going to be our lightest area. So again, my light direction, my source of light is coming in from this direction. For me, that's the right, but I believe yours is a mirrored image. So it's probably coming in from the left side if what you're seeing on the screen. This will be our lightest, this will be our darkest. And then to show that the tree is round, it's not a flat surface we're going to make sure that we get our lights in the center. So does anybody have any questions to this point? And I'm going to kind of scroll down to see. Are there any questions? Anybody over on YouTube have any questions as of now or over on the Facebook on the Academy? I don't see anything. Looks like everybody, the sound is going okay now and it's, you're, it's not out of focus. So that is all good. Excellent. So again, when I did this tree, this is the exact same way I did it. And on this tree, I had my, the darker side coming from 
this side. So my light source was this side, so it's kind of just the opposite. So you can kind of see the difference in the two. So if you're going to do one of these birch trees, go ahead and decide where your light, light source is coming from because that really makes a big difference when you're doing a painting of these birch trees. Now, if you don't like how this is going up, you can always go in and, you know, change your line a little bit, straighten it up because we're going to go in and we're just going to keep adding more colors. So I'm going to add just a little bit of my yellow ochre now. Remembering this is my light side, this is my dark. So I'm going to have more of the lighter colors over on this side. And what I'm doing, I'm placing the knife down, the palette knife down, and just dragging it across. And I want to put it over the top of some of those other colors the violet and the blue. And what we're doing, we're adding the textures of the trunk so you can use your palette knife laying it different ways, laying it more at an angle so it's more towards the back, more at an angle so it's leaning more towards the front side of your palette knife. Go in and put some over on this side. have any questions be sure and ask and I don't know if we're on over on the brush o fun group if not I feel bad about that but we'll post a link so that everybody can see it and the link will be on YouTube, on the Fine Art Cafe channel, and also on the Fine Art Cafe Academy. Um, I will start a new live presentation, and we'll name that one um, the Brush O Birch Tree so that you guys can find it there. And we'll do the, the replay there also so that everybody can watch it and see. Now, when you join the Fine Art Cafe Academy, you do need to register. There's no charge for that. That's just a way that the system is set up that to watch any of the free demos or any of the online courses, you have to be a registered, um, almost like a registered student. So be sure to go ahead and register You'll get an email with a crazy long password, um, and then it'll give you a link to go in and change that, or you go in and um, you know change it to a password that you know um, and you one that you'll remember. If you have trouble, be sure to let me know, and I can go in and manually add a person. So again, I'm just going in, adding these colors. Again, this is my darker side. If I want to change colors, I just 
rinse my palette knife off. We're going to get a lot of the color in tonight. We're only going to go about an hour tonight. And then next week, I may have to postpone it and then be back the following week. I'm not 100% sure if, um, if we have some other plans that are coming up. So I may have to cancel next week but that'll give this a chance to dry. Um, and we're gonna go back in with our bleach and water. Uh, most of you who know me know I use a lot of um, bleach and water. It's 50% household bleach, or if on the UK, it is um, a product called Melton. It's a baby bottle sterilizer and uh, you can use that to lift up brush out. Okay, we have a couple questions over on Facebook. Let's see. Yes, going strong. Um, it says, I wish I had violet. I think the purple that I have might be too reddish. The purple is pretty red. What you could do though is you could mix that a little bit with your blue to tone it down a little bit, Debbie. That might work. Um, you froze again. Oh geez. Going strong. Okay. So that's as far back as I can see the comments. So if there's anybody else have another comment, just let me know and retype it or I can go back into it um, later on and, and then answer it. You could also, you don't have to use these colors, you know, play around, pick other colors. You could use more of the grays and browns in this. For some reason, I'm really liking these three colors together. If you've seen any of my animals, um, that I've done, I did an orangutan, I did a goat, I'm working on a, um, a donkey right now. And then what else did I do? Oh, the cow. All those animals I did were with these three colors. For some, I just really like them for some reason. But again, we're going to go in and lighten and get all those wonderful other colors that happen when you go in with the bleach and water. And we were talking about that, the 50% bleach and 50% water. And again, it's just household bleach. What I'm doing now is I'm just going in and just kind of adding water to this and it's pretty splotchy right now which is you know that's fine because we're going like I say we're going to go in and really change it up so where I have some of these areas that it's you know kind of like a rough area what you can do is that's where you can start bringing branches off. And again, I'm using the palette knife. And if you want it a little thicker, And let's do another one up here. Again, I'm going to try and do all of this tree 
with just the palette knife. So I want those branches coming out. Let's add a little more water to my yellow ochre. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And I want to just drop some of that color. into these branches. Just to add a little more variation on the color. I have a hard time when I'm painting and talking at the same time. So this branch, I want it coming out of the tree in the center. Um, Marlene, hi. Marlene is over on YouTube. Um, she is just stopping in. Oh, she's going to be FaceTiming with her new granddaughter. Wonderful. Congratulations, Marlene. And yes, it will. There, there will be replays. We'll get those up. So let's start. Now, a lot of times people have a harder time doing it on the opposite side, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. So how many people freeze when somebody says you need you're going to be painting a tree how many people really have a hard time deciding on how you're going to paint a tree painting those branches Anybody? For years, I had this mental block about, oh my gosh, I had to paint a tree. How do you paint a tree? And I had an instructor that he told me if you're sitting watching TV at night, grab just a paintbrush or you could use a pencil and just pretend on scrap paper that you're going to be doing a tree. Um, and you know, if you look up into a tree, the branches aren't straight. They have nooks and crannies and and, you know, they're kind of really odd, not really straight looking. And that's what I love to do is I, I love to jerk. Like if I'm putting a, a branch in, I go a ways, I kind of stop, hesitate, and then go a ways again and just keep, you know, going on. And I get these little nubbins and those are great to bring another branch off of. And then a lot of times in a branch, let's say this branch is here. 
it comes back and comes down. And it adds a lot of character to a tree. At least I think. I think it really, you know, it gives the tree character. It brings in the um, characteristics of different kind of trees. And I just, it's, for me, they're just, it, they're fun to do. If I'm doing a landscape, you'll see me a lot of times, I'll even bring a branch way from the side of the painting and bring it just straight over in front of everything. And I think that also helps to give depth to a painting. Let's throw a branch coming up. And let's bring one down. Put a few more over here. So do we have any other questions? Am I missed anything? I didn't see where anybody had said that they really don't like doing trees. And maybe that was just me. But look how that runs where it hits the where the paper was wet and how organic that goes in and it looks. So we only have just uh, maybe about 15 more minutes. So again, if anyone has any questions, let me know. And I don't think you can get um, too many branches coming out. Love the blues and the browns for the trunks. What I'm actually using, Marlene, is the yellow ochre. I love the yellow ochre. I love that when you're using it with the violet and the OST Oath blue. So, again, if you remember, and I don't want to go back and pull up that other painting, or that other photo, I'm sorry. But I do want to get a branch that is coming out from in front that you're looking up at. Let's go in and add some more of these just branches that are coming down. Yeah, I like the yellow ochre. That's one of my, my favorite colors. I do use that a lot. Let's have a branch coming up this way. And one over here. Yeah, one. 
Um, Marlene over on YouTube is asking, do I just drag your palette knife a certain way? I use it flat to get a flatter, a thicker branch. I use it at the, the tip to get a thinner branch. What I do is I start off, let me get enough on there. I start off, I stop, I go again, and if, because I'm doing it so slow, but let me see if I can do it on here. I go a bit, I stop, I go a bit, I stop, go a bit, I stop. And I get these little nubbins, and that's where I'll start a branch off from. I hope that helps. I don't know, Marlene, does that, does that help in answering the question in um, how I use the palette knife? If I want a thicker branch, you can kind of lay it flat and pull it up. And again, this is on gator board, so it has that kind of ripple in it. It's plastic, so it's, it, the paint beads up on it. But that's how I do a branch. And then I get them going all different ways. Yeah, if you use the point or the edge, you can get thinner branches. And because it's pulling the paint off of the brush as you go, they thin out. Well, thank you. That's what I like. I love a painting to be very organic looking. I really, um, I think it brings it more to life than if you're taking and you're just doing a straight branch. I like it to have those little, I call them the, the nubbins, but it's easy because then at those, you can bring another branch out. But that's, that's how I do them. That's, you know, kind of how I've been taught over the years. Let me clean this off. So I think for now, that's kind of where we're going to leave this. Not sure I um, really am thrilled with it at this point. Let me go see if we have any... Well, thank you. you I, I just love those, the, as I call them, the nubbins. I, I just love that because it's, it's so fun to draw a branch out from there. Um, and that was um, Zag Ryder who was saying that uh, she likes that. So definitely, you know, give this a try. As I said, all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use this palette knife to lay all of the branches in. I'm going to let this dry. I'll come back in, um, whether it's next week or the following week. As I said, I may need to take a break next week. Um, uh, we have some plans coming up, so maybe I, I will postpone it to the following week. But um, we'll see if we need to add more branches. Then we're going to go in, and this needs to be totally dry. We're going to go in with our bleach and water. Again, that's just regular household bleach if you're in the States. And it's just 
I go to the dollar store, I buy just a jug, a gallon jug of household bleach, and I mix. I always start off with 50% bleach, 50% water. You can always adjust it and go heavier or more water than bleach depending on how much you want taken out and how heavy the paint is. So you get to kind of learn to kind of play around. Now I will use an old brush for that when I go in and I start lifting. And if you have seen my, the demonstrations, go back and watch the demonstrations if you haven't. And I show how I do the color swatches and I go in with bleach and water, 50-50 bleach and water on one side. And then on the other side, I use the Melton. And Melton comes from the UK. It is a bottle, baby bottle sterilizer. And the only place I know where to get it from is the UK. I buy it in tablets and then I mix my own and it works pretty good. It, I don't think it lifts quite as much as um, the bleach and water, but use your swatches. When you're picking colors, here's a great tip. So if you don't have, and I know Debbie said she doesn't have the violet. She has the purple, and the purple has a lot of the reds in it. So if you were going to use colors to go along with the purple, which you can, I would suggest going through and I put them on the ring so I can see what my lighter colors are going to be. This is the yellow ochre that I used. I like the yellow ochre better with the violet than I do with the purple, but that's just me. But again, you can use maybe the yellow with it. I like that. The yellow ochre has the browns and the greens in it, where the yellow doesn't have that mixture. It has more of the lighter colors, the, the warmer colors. And I think that would go wonderful with that purple, Deb. And then if you use another color, you might want to go with um, one of the blues that has the purple in it. Let me see. This is the Oast Blue. So this is the purple. You could use that because it has a lot of the purple in the Oast Blue or the Cobalt Blue. I like the Ultramarine. If I was going to use the purple, this is the color combination I would. I don't Deb, if you're still on, but Debbie, this is the color combination I would use with the purple, and I think it would work out great. The Ultramarine, the purple, And I think the lemon is a little bit too light. I like this with this more of the, the orangey in it. That's the color combination that I would use. I don't know. You guys tell me. What do you think? If you were going to use the purple instead of the violet that I used, what do you think? Do you think these would be a great color match? to create your colors. I do. And Debbie, if you're still on, let me know what you think. If you like those colors together. If I have time, maybe I'll, I'll try. And De oh, Debbie's over on Facebook. 
you have the Ost Blue and the Prussian Cobalt Marine. Yep, I agree. The yellow other than the lemon too. Yeah, I think the lemon is too light. It doesn't have that more, the darker organic color. But that would be my combination. And this is what I do. Before I start a painting, and that's how I came up with this color combination that I've been using. I take my color swatches and I decide, and especially I do this because of Brusho, and Brusho has so many different colors in it. Um, I don't know if everybody on the live tonight, if you all have Brusho, but in one little pot of color, in this little pot of color, there's a lot of colors that make this color. So if you look at this olive green, if you mix it with water, you get an olive green color. If you spray it with water, you get oranges, yellows, blues. All of those colors were in that one little pot. All of those colors were in that one little pot of olive green. Each color is that way. This is the black. And in that pot of black, if you mix it with water, you dilute it with water, and you mix them like I did here on the board, you get the black. If you sprinkle and spray with water, or you spray with water and then sprinkle, you can see all of the colors. In this black, there's blues, there's oranges. There's all kinds of colors in those little pots. I love brush oak because of this. You can get such a wonderful texture, such an organic look because of the colors. And we'll be sprinkling a little bit for our leaves. But there you go. Do color swatches. If you've not done color swatches yet and you have brush oak, I strongly suggest do your color swatches. Go in and make a stripe of 50-50 water and bleach. Go in and, and you know, lift the color. Um, Zag is asking if Brusho is light fast. Boy, that's a can of worms when you say that. I've been using Brusho for six years over six years now, I have not had a painting fade. I know some of the people who have been using Brusho for years over in the UK have told me they have not had a painting fade. Now, I don't care what medium you're using, whether it's oils, it's acrylics, it's whatever. I sell a piece of art I always tell people never ever hang the art in direct sunlight. It's just rule of thumb. Never hang a fine art or piece of art in sunlight. Reds, they sometimes fade. Even in um, like Winsor Newton, they're, they're red. Sometimes they're going to fade. I, it just happens. I always tell people to if you're going to mat it and frame it in a you know gla under glass, use UV glass. It's a little more expensive, but it's just that added protection. Now, if you really want to spend um, big bucks, you can get museum glass because that's non-reflective and it's UV and it's but it's super super expensive. So, you know that's my suggestions, and and I I send. A notice with my paintings that I sell, do not hang in light, you know, sunlight, direct sunlight, um, matte and frame it under UV glass. Lately, I have been um, sealing my paintings. I've been putting them on a cradle board. Here's one. And it's not quite dry yet. 
I mount them on a cradle board. This is what about half inch, three quarters of an inch thick. I don't know if you're familiar with the cradle board. I mounted on this wood, it's birch wood. Mounted on that. Press it so that I know it's drying and there's no bubbles, no ripples or anything and that it's you know totally sealed onto the cradle board and then I use a cold wax and the, what I've been using is the Dorland's wax medium and I put that on let it dry 24 to 48 hours then I buff it with a lint free cloth I'll put another coat on and let it dry and then I, I you know buff that to get the shine that I want and this I just put the wax on this morning so it's not shiny it's, it's you can't see a sh real sheen in it but that coats it it seals it and it's giving it the UV protection I also before I mount it I forgot to tell you I spray it with um, Kamar and then there's a UV spray by Craylon that you know I'll go in and you know just spray a light covering on it and that's just to just give it a little more of a protection to the the paint on the watercolor paper before I start waxing it make sure everything is dry uh, Debbie wants to know she said uh, how do you keep the brush off from smearing when you mount it I've never had it smear once it's dry of course once you touch it with water before it's sealed that's going to be a, a problem um, I use this is the process that I do I use this golden acrylic primer and extender and I put two to three coats of this on the cradle board the birch board let those dry in between the coats and then I lightly sand it because it'll leave it a little bit gritty feeling then after that's all dry I use this Liquitex matte gel and this is how I mount the watercolor paper onto the cradle board I then make sure I put heavy books or a weight or something on top of everything you know I use a brayer to make sure it's all spread and, and down really smooth and there's no air bubbles underneath and no ripples um, and then um, you know I make sure it dries I leave it sit for a couple days my orangutan is being uh, it's pressed right now because I just glued it on with the matte gel um, this morning and then I'm going to wax that let's see can you use brush out on gessoed canvas yes this is a turtle I did this is canvas and as you can see you get a really great texture I sprinkled I um, just then sprayed with water got my texture the way I wanted it for the water then kind of drew my turtle on and painted my turtle and then this has been waxed normally what I do with canvas is I use the like um, UV spray the Kamar the UV spray and then like triple thick just to seal it with the wax I just put a couple coats of the wax on but that's that's on canvas I have quite a few of them that I have done on canvas oh and Marlene thank you Queen Bee turned out yes I'm really really pleased with how Queen Bee turned out let me show you one other hopefully you can see this um, this is a class 
that is on the Fine Art Cafe by Teresa Brown. And she shows you how to create these amazing horses. And then a lot of them, she'll go in and she will do um, Zantangle in the manes of the horses. And they're just amazing. But he's done on canvas. Again, the brush out is on the, the canvas. I sprayed it. And I, if I remember right, this is gray. <laughs> it was kind of like one of those monochromatic type paintings other than with brush out, you don't get just one color in that little pot. Um, and then I added a little bit of I don't know, was it kind of a yellow, maybe it probably was yellow ochre in just to get some more, a little bit of color definition in this guy. But again, this class is on the Vine Art Cafe Academy and it's by Teresa, Teresa Brown. And Teresa is, she's amazing and I love to go in and it was a big debate as whether I would do the Zantangle in his mane. And one of these days I'm going to get the time and I'm going to do another horse and, and then do like all the braiding and the, the Zantangle, is that how you say it? Um, Zantango on the horse. I just, I just don't have time. And this one is wax. This one has been finished with the Dorlin wax. So that kind of wraps it up. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, thank you. I hope I answered all of the questions. It was kind of hard to see a lot of the different questions. Kind of go back and see. If not, what I'll do is I'll go back in and I'll try to answer them. Um, Debbie, yeah, the black is so cool. Um, the bees, the the Mr. Wild Bee. <laughs> if anybody's on the Brush O Fun group. Um, if you're not, you've got to um, join that group. It's an amazing group of people. We're all brush show enthusiasts. Um, but I did um, the Miss Queen Bee, and then I did Mr. Wild Bee. And I don't usually use black, but in this case, I used the, um, the brush show black because I just wanted that intense, fun color. But... Uh, they, they really turned out pretty cool. So again, thank you guys. I hope you had fun. Sorry about the beginning and all the technical issues with the, um, the, the sound. I don't know, it's crazy. Sometimes I get a um, echo and then other times I don't. So I really can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. But again, everybody have a wonderful rest of your evening and have a good weekend. I think I probably am going to postpone, the more I'm thinking about it, I'm going to postpone next week, but we'll come back in and we will work more on this guy. Probably add some more branches, you know, get some more of these branches coming off. And then we're going to go in with our bleach and water and kind of lighten things up and what we'll do is we'll go in and add some branches going across. So that will be shadows that are reflecting on your trunk of your tree. And we're just going to have fun. This is a really easy painting to do, you guys. You're going to love it. You have to give it a try. Make sure if you do, post it over on the Brush O Fun group so we can all talk about it and share and um, just enjoy. So have fun, be creative, everybody, and we will talk with you soon. Bye.